Most people using AI are doing it wrong, which is why it's surprisingly easy to get ahead of 99% of them. The gap between people who understand AI and those who don't is getting wider, faster than ever before. In this video, I'll give you a clear roadmap to master AI. And the best part? You can actually do it in just 30 days, even if you're a complete beginner. Let's start with the most important concept, machine English. Most people talk to AI like it's a person, and that's a huge mistake. Why? Because generative AI systems like ChatGPT don't actually understand our language. They predict it, and that's where most people get stuck. Think about your phone's keyboard. When you type, running late, be there in, those little suggestion bubbles pop up. Five minutes, 10 minutes, soon. Your phone doesn't know where you are or how late you're running. It's just predicting based on patterns. Millions of similar messages that came before yours. AI models like ChatGPT work the same way, but massively scaled up. Here's the key difference. They don't store pre-baked answers. They generate the response on the fly, one word at a time. How do they generate it? At a high level, AI breaks your text into smaller parts called tokens. Each token is a word or sometimes part of a word. Then AI converts each token into a list of numbers, multidimensional vectors. Those numbers are placed inside a massive mathematical space called an embedding space. In that space, similar ideas tend to live closer together. Words like late, minutes, soon, and waiting are clustered near each other, but far from words like elephant or volcano. When it's time to generate an answer, AI looks at the context and predicts the most likely next token. So when it sees, I'll be there in five, it weighs all the options, minutes, seconds, hours, days, and picks minutes because that's what fits the pattern. The response is generated not from memory, not from stored facts, but from probability and proximity. That's why AI can feel so smart, but also so alien. Here's the critical takeaway. When your prompt is vague, this prediction machine will produce guesses that are also vague. And if your prompt is sharp and targeted, AI will come back with sharp and targeted guesses. That's what I call machine English. It helps AI compute your intent, not just try to comprehend it. So what does a sharper prompt look like? I use the AIM framework. A for actor. Tell the model who it's acting as. I for input. Give it the context and data it needs. M for mission. What do you want it to do? Instead of typing, fix my resume, try this. You are the world's most sought after resume editor and business writer. You've reviewed thousands of resumes that led to interviews at top tech companies. I'm attaching my resume and the job description for a senior product manager role at a fintech company. Review it and give me a bullet list of 10 specific ideas on how to improve clarity, measurable impact, and alignment with the role. That's how you take AIM. It turns a prompt into a structure the model can understand, compute, and reason with. You can use this three-part structure in almost any prompt you write. From now on, your results will be at least five to 10 times better than before. Only when you learn its language does AI finally start working for you. Now here's a mistake most people make. They Google top 50 AI tools, pick 10, and jump from one to another, skimming through all of them. That's a recipe for failure. My recommendation? Pick one. Go deep. Think of learning AI the same way you'd learn an instrument. There's research showing that drummers pick up guitar faster than complete beginners, even though drumming isn't about melody and requires completely different physical skills. Why? Because they already know how to practice. Their brain is trained to see structures and patterns. The deeper you dig into one foundational model, the faster you'll find the rhythm of all the others. So which one do you pick? If you want the most mature one, pick ChatGPT. If you're deep into Google's ecosystem, try Gemini. If you want more business and project-based AI, go with Claude. But really, it doesn't matter what you pick. Spend time with one of them and learn its personality, its cadence, its limits, its strengths. The goal is to start feeling the rhythm, to understand how the model responds to different types of input. By the end of week one, you should be able to write a structured prompt without even thinking. Now that you understand how to speak to AI, let's talk about what actually makes your outputs smart. And that's context. The world's smartest AI will sound completely clueless unless you feed it context. Every answer AI gives depends on how it understands the question. If you don't give it context, it has no grounding. Remember, inside these AI models, there is nothing but a crazy mathematical space filled with billions of numbers. Context is the map that helps you navigate that space. It tells AI where to look and what matters. The best way to build that map is with an acronym I call MAP. N is for memory, the conversation history or notes that carry over from previous chat sessions. You can repaste the thread or ask the model to summarize before starting again. That's how you build continuity in your conversations. A is for assets, 
the files, data, and resources you attach or copy-paste into your prompt. These assets help ground the model in reality. The second A is for actions, tools the model can call to do work. The action could be searching the web, scanning your drive, writing code, or creating a Notion doc. P is for prompt, the instruction itself. The better you get with memory, assets, and external actions, the better context you'll give AI in the prompt. And the richer the context, the better the AI reasoning and response. Once you start using these frameworks like AIM and MAP, you've joined the top 10% of AI users. But if you want to hit that absolute expert level, there's one more thing you really need. Debug your thinking. When you're not getting the right answer, the problem is not the AI, it's your thinking. I remember the first time I ever prompted an AI. It was one of the earliest models from OpenAI. I spent an entire day trying to make sense of it, and by the end, I was super frustrated because it seemed random and unpredictable. But back then, no one understood. The phrase prompt engineering hadn't even existed yet. Prompting isn't typing, it's iterating. When the output is weak, I assume the fault is mine, because it is. Did I give it the right persona? Did I provide the right context? Did I give it the right goal? And sometimes I even ask the model itself. What did you do, and why did you choose that answer? It will explain its logic, its chain, and that's when the magic starts. You're not just using AI, you're learning how it thinks. There are three cheat codes I use for debugging. The first is the chain of thought pattern. When the answer seems off, say, think step by step, show your reasoning, then give me the final, concise answer. The second is the verifier pattern. Say to the AI, ask me three questions that would clarify my intent. Ask them one at a time, then combine what you've learned and try again. The third is the refinement pattern, where you refine your input itself. Say, before answering, propose two sharper versions of my question. Ask which one I prefer. So AI tells you how to ask the right way, then you continue. Keep iterating with these patterns. These loops teach the model how to understand you and teach you how to understand the model. Test, tweak, tune up, push until you can tell why something is working and why something is off. That's when it clicks. You're not talking at AI anymore. You're having an ongoing conversation. You and AI are learning together from each other. But here's the thing. It's not enough to just debug your mind. If your post sounds like every other LinkedIn post pasted from ChatGPT, you still have a problem. That's why the next step is learning to steer AI to experts. When you ask ChatGPT a question, you're not searching a database of answers. You're sampling from millions of probable ideas that AI has learned over time. Some are brilliant, some are average, some are completely made up, and some are flat out wrong. If you prompt vaguely, like explain how to make a team more innovative, the model will give you a superficial, generic answer full of buzzwords. You'll read it and think, yeah, I already knew that. So how do you fix that? You direct the model away from the middle and toward the sharper edges of its brain. Instead of that vague prompt, say, explain how to make a team more innovative using ideas from Pixar's Brain Trust, Satya Nadella's strategy at Microsoft, and Harvard Business Review's research on psychological safety. Now you've pulled the model from mediocrity into mastery by navigating it toward experts, frameworks, and depth. What if you want to learn about something and you don't know who the experts are? No problem. Ask AI first. Say, list the top experts, researchers, and research papers on this topic. Then feed that same information back to the model and prompt. Using these experts and sources, synthesize an original framework that addresses the current gaps. That's how you make sure AI isn't an echo chamber anymore. Now we need to talk about verification. Sometimes AI will tell you things like, Einstein failed math in school, or the Great Wall of China is visible from space. Neither is true. But the scary part is AI will sound just as confident when it's wrong as when it's right. You can tell AI 100 times, stop making stuff up, but all models are essentially generative by design. Making things up is why they exist. So what do you do about that? You simply verify. Don't just consume, critique. There are five ways to separate intelligence from illusion. Assumptions, sources, counter evidence, auditing, and cross-model verification. First, assumptions. Ask, list every assumption you made and rank each by confidence. This exposes the hidden beliefs baked into the answer. Second, sources. Ask, Cite two independent sources for each major claim. Include title, URL, and a one-line quote. Now you can check it yourself. That's the scaffolding behind the answer. Third, counter evidence. Push it. Find one credible source that disagrees with your answer. Explain the dependencies. That's where real reasoning lives. Fourth, auditing. Ask, recompute every figure. Show your math or code. You'll be shocked how often the numbers change once you make AI slow down and audit itself. 
Fifth, and this is my favorite, cross-model verification. Run the same prompt in ChatGPT, Gemini, and Claude. Take the output from one model and ask another to critique it. Or feed the claims of one model into another and say, verify this. That's how you separate noise from knowledge. By the end of your third week, you'll start feeling more in control of your output. But here's the problem. The best AI outputs aren't the ones that sound the most original. They're the ones that sound like you. That's why the final step is developing taste. Most people use AI like a vending machine. They push a button, grab the same junk food output everyone else gets, and call it a day. If you do that, most people will know you just copy-pasted it. But you're past that now. It's time to step into the ring. Treat AI like your sparring partner. Argue with it. Push back. Sharpen your thinking. Sharpen its thinking. That's where the ocean framework comes in. It's how you turn generic answers into tasteful insights, something that actually sounds like you. O is for original. Look at the response. Is there a non-obvious idea in it? If not, push. Give me three angles no one else has thought about. Label one as risky and recommend the one you like most. C is for concrete. Are there names, examples, and numbers that make sense? If not, ask. Back every claim with one real example from a real company or real person. E is for evident. Is the reasoning visible? Is there enough evidence? If not, ask, show your logic in three bullets. Provide evidence before you provide your final answer. A is for assertive. Does it take a stance you could agree or disagree with? If not, push. Don't tell me what I wanna hear. Pick a side, state your thesis, defend it, and then address the best counterpoint. N is for narrative. What's the story? Does it flow? Is it tight? Guide it. Write it like a story. Hook, problem, insight, proof, action or whatever narrative structure fits your purpose. As you apply Ocean over 30 days, you'll start noticing something deeper. Every prompt you write, every revision you push, every judgment you make, you're not just training the model, you're training yourself. Your prompts become clearer because your thinking becomes clearer. Your critiques become sharper because your standards become higher. Your outputs become more distinctive because you've developed actual taste, not just for AI responses, but for ideas themselves. AI is coming whether we like it or not. To some, it might trigger deep fears about replacement and obsolescence. But I remain a perpetual optimist. AI is not here to replace human work. It's here to restore human worth. It handles the mechanical so you can focus on the meaningful. It accelerates the tedious so you can invest in the creative. The people who will thrive aren't the ones who use AI the most. They're the ones who use it the best, who understand that AI is a thinking partner, not a thinking replacement. Master the frameworks. Aim for prompts. Map for context. Ocean for taste. Practice the patterns. Chain of thought, verifier, refinement. Build the habits. Verify, iterate, push back. In 30 days, you won't just use AI. You'll think with it. And that changes everything.